I think some of the areas where people struggle most with grace Mm -hmm. is in close relationships. Yeah. Right. Whether it's family or business or church, whatever it is, wherever you've got, like, here's the thing. People care about stuff, right? Like when you're, if you're in a family business, people care about that. If you're in church together, people care about that. If you have just a family, right? People have strong opinions and they care. And that's great that people care, but when people care, they get really passionate about their opinion. And it's so hard to have unity in those situations. And this is where grace is so important, right? Sometimes it's going to require sacrifice, but always you need to have grace. Help me understand why you're thinking that way. Grace is going to help you like care for someone else, really love those other people. You know, it's really hard to love other people when they stab you. Yeah. That's what Christ did though. Yeah. So they stabbed him in the side. He said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And so what that like that's again, that's maturity. It's not taking it personal. Christ mm-hmm. didn't take it personal that they murdered him. Didn't take it personal. So whatever you're going through in your life, right, where you feel like, man, these people are out to get me, they're attacking me, just stop it. Yeah. You don't need to take it personal. If you want unity and if you want to be a reflection of the kingdom and really glorify God, unity is some of the greatest fruit for that. And again, this is on kingdom matters, right? I'm not saying that there's not a time for conflict, that there's not even a time for war, because there is. In Matthew 10, 34, Jesus said, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. And so there is an understanding Mm -hmm. of a time for conflict. But in matters where unity is a reflection of Christ, if you'll just have grace for people and stop taking it personal, you'll get so much further down the road. Yeah, that's good. And we're going to get into the actual application of those grace in very specific uh, circumstances. But I want to talk about a couple of the barriers um, just in, from a mentality standpoint. And, and the first one is, like I, sa- I asked the question, like when I say, you know, who's the them to you, having an us and them mentality is is a great barrier to unity. Because you can define that in so many different ways. And once there's a them, now now there's an us. And this is what right. we see. I mean, we see tribalism like just out of control. And you see, and it's it's everywhere. It's I mean, it's not just in politics, it's in your neighborhood. I mean, there's people, I, you know, I've seen neighbors fight over things about the use of the sidewalk. If you have one of those lame like Facebook neighborhood chat pages, like some of the stuff people put on there is ridiculous. People are professional dividers. Yes. Or as a uh, Zig Ziglar used to say, some people find fault like there's a reward for it. Exactly right. Exactly right. And then another thing that really comes in, and this is once again very common, is, is judgment. Like judgment everywhere. I mean, especially I feel like especially with Christians, there's a massive amount of judgment. One of the things that you'll hear people say is like, only God can judge me and like, <laughs> don't judge me. And like, oh, look at you being all judgmental. And like, it's, it's funny to me because I've seen other people in the comments on friends posts and different things, when they'll have something that goes big on social media, people will be like, if you say, take a hard stance and you say, whatever, this is wrong. People will be like, Oh, look at you judging the people. And it's like, well, hang on. Is that actual judgment? You know, I don't know. That's where we could get in debate, but, but there's some very clear guidelines in scripture for judgment. And I just want to kind of give this because I think it's something that's out of control in particular with Christians. Very first thing people say like, Oh, only God can judge me. No, that's not actually true. Right, anyone can judge you, and actually, if you look, I think it's in First Corinthians five. Paul actually tells them, tells the church to judge the man in their in their midst. So there's definitely some criteria, but I think the first thing is, and this is for Christians: if someone's not a Christian, you're not. It's not your job to judge them. Mm-hmm. It's God's job. So, so like, just stop with all that stuff. Because, and also, have some love and some care for the person who who who. If you're doing something wrong. You don't need someone to come up and just tell you how wrong you are and how stupid you are, and also that you're you're breaking some rules that you didn't even know about or care about. Well, so it's like the self worst righteousness thing you can do. is a major affront to you. Yeah, massively. And, and so, so first thing, are they a Christian? Then second thing, okay, let's say they are. Great. Do you have a relationship with them? If the answer is to no, go ahead and leave that one. Because once again, looking at scripture, go judge that person. Like the scripture we have from this Paul. is one of those issues where people really got to as the scripture says, put on a new nature. Yeah. Shake off the ways of the world. Yes. And as you, as we transform, as we begin to think like Christ, one of the things that you got to let go of is how, because this is so, it's such a worldly way of thinking that everything is a fight. Everything right. is assaulting other people. Everything is I'm right, you're wrong. Right. Right. That, that attitude, that way of being is such a worldly way of being that often gets dragged into our walk with God. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a gag reflex now that people just 
kick out their judgment. And opinions are so cheap, man. I feel like people in comments and like keyboard warriors and just how everybody kind of everybody's opinion matters. No, it doesn't. Some people's opinions really aren't as aren't thought through any further than the one second it took for them to form the word. And, and so I, I people are we're so quick to do that. So go just to finish this off. So like, are they a Christian? Yes. Do you have a relationship with them? Yes. Great. Okay. So what's the judgment look like? It's there to restore them. Not to keep your, like Garrett just said, where we have this this reaction where we want to tell people what we think or we, we automatically want to weigh in on it. It's to restore that person. And sometimes, like we see different things throughout Scripture where they say to restore this man means to put him out. Other times it's to go and bring it up to him to give him the chance to go like, hey, you're right, I'm wrong, and to have that person enable that person to repent. Scripture says to be unified in Christ. Mm -hmm. Christ is the truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. That's what That's what Christ is. That's what it means to be unified, to be in him. So when you're trying to bring things into unity, all you're trying to do, it's not, it's not me versus you. It's, it's just saying, hey, this is who Christ is. This is the way. Yes. This is the truth. Right. This is what life looks like. And this is the way that uh, Christ is so good at it. When you, If you really study his life, when he would get attacked, he, he, would, he would respond but it was never like you punch me, I'll punch you back. Right. Yeah. Right. He didn't just like lay there. Right. He didn't just take it. He but he he would respond. But it wasn't like you you punch me, I'm I'm going to punch you back. The way that he would respond is he would always change the nature of what the issue was. Yeah. You're you've got an issue with me. That's not what the issue is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like here's what here's what it's really about. And so it's all like really that's what unity does. Mm -hmm. You're shifting the fight away from a me right. versus you fight to, hey, here's the real battle. Yeah. He was able to bring truth with with grace because and, and how it, like you said, he didn't take it personally. If if you get upset when someone punches you in the face, you can't shift them in the right direction. Right. Yeah, that could go a lot of different ways, but I'm going to leave that. <laughs> um, but but so you brought the, the point up about how Jesus dealt with it. So like. Here's something unity. And that, what, by what the we're way, not that's is, that's the purpose of the scripture. Turn the other cheek, right? A lot of people think that like turn the other cheek is a pacifist mentality, right? You just of get like I'm down. just gonna let someone you know kill my family. Yeah, I wouldn't. No, I would not. B slapping someone, it's about offense, right? Oh, you've you've offended me. Here, let me. I'll let you hit me again. That's how much it bothered me. Right. Right. Because that's what a slap. If someone like slaps you. They're not like trying to stab you. Right. There's a difference. Right. Right. You can tell in someone's behavior, right? Like they, they don't like you. They want to spit on you. That's like honestly a better example. If someone spits on you, like turn the other way, let them spit on the other side of your shirt. Right. Right. Because that's really the way you should hear and read that scripture is that it's about offense. Yeah. No, that's good.